Hi, welcome to my commentary for my test speedrun of Iggy. Um, so, so there's two things I need to explain. There's what a test is and what Iggy is. Uh, you don't actually need to know anything about this game. I'll try to explain what you need to know as it happens. Uh, as for what a test is, look it up. The tool assistant speedrun. Um, right now this doesn't look like a test. It looks more or less just like playing the game. There's some frame perfect inputs here and there, but nothing complicated. I'll briefly talk about um, what speedrunning this game is like. Um, not necessarily testing it. There's a frame perfect jump right there, but m there's not a lot of optimization you can do to the movement mechanics in this game. There's a little bit uh, later on, especially, but um, right now this is mostly just walking forward. The the real optimization comes from upgrading things at the right time basically. It's, it's kind of an RPG. There's some stuff you can upgrade there in the bottom corner. And because I don't normally speedrun this game, I don't speedrun games. This is my first speedrun and it's a task. I had to look up um, a reference. So I just found the best run I could find which is by Remar, the guy who actually made the game, also speedran the game. So I downloaded that VOD and used that as reference for knowing when to upgrade things. And there's sector one already complete. So there's five sectors in this game that get progressively longer, more or less. That's So uh, theoretically, we're a tenth of the way through. Yeah, so there you can tell it's definitely a task. That crack happened very quickly. Also, I've just picked up what's called the Resonance Detonator. It's now the third weapon I have. It's not really a weapon. It's actually a kick. So it, it's, it's a weapon that does the same thing as a kick, but instantly and in all directions, and it doesn't slow me down. It does take a while to switch to the weapon and uh, use it again. So this is a non-pacifist run, uh, and which means I'm allowed to do as much killing as I want. For it's quite slow, so I don't know not much happens. I usually just walk past enemies, but I can do as much as I want. Uh, technically, so there's two ways. Pacifist means two different things in the context of this game. Uh, there's a pacifist playthrough, which means 50 or fewer kills in the game in general, and there's a pacifist speedrun, which means zero kills. Or maybe one, I'm not sure. But, um, so here's a little bit of an interesting thing. I'm gonna grab a checkpoint there, and I'm gonna skip this upgrade because it has a chance of giving me something useless. And, and then I'm gonna grab this and die. And then that's a skip. That's pretty cool. It's not really a skip. It kind of is a skip, and it's cool. One armor left right there, that was a bit lucky. I jump on top of that to skip the dialogue there. It doesn't really do anything, and in fact, I think on later upgrades of that type, I just walk into them, but whatever. I actually, that was a slight mistake there. I, I forgot to jump out of that climb animation. So anyway, this is the most obvious skip in the game. Boom, that's pretty cool. This is a little bit less obvious. I've cracked um, the Buster Gun, I believe. I'll use that in the next sector. And I take a slightly longer route right here to make this fall a lot shorter. So that blue stuff laying on the ground is what gives me level ups, clearly. It upgrade. It's called Nano, and it's mostly just found laying on the ground. I'll skip a cutscene there. And you get enough level, you get enough nano, and you level up. You level up, you get a point, you get a point, you spend it on upgrades. So what I've done there is I've agreed to a truce um, with the Tazen because I'm technically a pacifist. I haven't killed that much. I think I'm at zero kills at this point. I'm not sure. But um, they're like, well, you seem nice enough. Let's do... I've upgraded attack level four in the middle of the truce, which is kind of funny. But... Enemies, there are a lot of enemies that suddenly don't exist, and they will not shoot at me anymore, clearly. This does not last very long. In fact, I actually break the truce to make um, something a little faster later on in this sector. This is actually super simple. I believe I did a little bit of that walking through at full speed, because I didn't have the patience to test that frame by frame. There's nothing to optimize there, it's just walking forward. And this run took me, so this is a 26 minute run or something, and the, it took me about 6 to 12 hours, 
I'm not sure exactly. I should know that in more detail than I do, but it took a while. I used uh, over, I think, 2,600 rewinds, basically. So you may have noticed me jumping down ledges instead of just walking off them. And that's because I get a bunch of v extra vertical speed. Horizontal speed and vertical speed are entirely separate. Um, so I can jump down ledges. That was, those jumps didn't mean anything. So what I'm going to do, I click through that soldier right there to get a bunch of, uh, to break the troops. And the benefit of that is it changes the story in this boss fight. That actually lets the boss fight happen, because if you have a truce, the boss fight doesn't happen. So this is a bit one-sided. I can't skip this dialogue, so I just have to spam through it. And speaking of spam, it's a very one-sided fight. Most of the fights in this game are very one-sided, with I think the exception of Iosa and Tor in sectors nine and the last sector. I'm a sector four, so no longer truce. They all shoot at me. So I'm going to do something a little bit interesting here. I'm going to do what's called a nano field reboot. I'm going to crouch, enter a command, and destroy my own nano field, or reboot my own nano field, and that resets my upgrades. And the benefit of that is I can. It's basically a respec. I can put everything into strength there in order to break through that door. And I had to manipulate that turret a little bit because it was frustrating. Here's the other advantage of upgrading strength. I can do that skip as well. So I've now skipped maybe half the sector, maybe like a third of it or so in total. That rocket barely misses me. So enemy randomness in this game is a real thing. Um, and I can't really manipulate that in the task because of how randomness in computers works. If I cause... If something random happens and I undo time and cause the random thing to happen again, it'll happen the same way if it happens at the same time. So I, if I want something random to happen differently, I have to cause it to happen in a different time. Um, and some, sometimes that's just not optimal. There are several different ways of doing that room. Um, one in the, the other one is grabbing the shredder and jumping off of it and maintaining your speed a little bit. But I didn't do it. Here I'm going to be a bit rude. Not for no reason, but um, I'm going to do another nano field reboot, and I don't want that scout messing with me. I should mention something real quick about how rewinding time works in this. The program that I use is called Hourglass, and it has a bit of a limitation. I can't undo things in a way that's particularly useful. So I can't change things in the middle of this run. Um, I can only undo... I have a backspace, but I don't have a skip to the middle of the paragraph and make a change. So if there are any mistakes, then I just have to live with them if I don't immediately catch them. This is a bit cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cause a dialogue to pop up, and that's going to freeze time. And then you see the little X next to the time on the, on the left. But stuff is still happening, which is, I don't know. A little bit weird, but I'm um, time is based off in-game time, so that's okay, I guess. I have to duck under that, otherwise the knockback would be too much. No, I'd fall down. I would get knocked back. So this this is Sector Five, by the way. Sector Five is having watched this back is home to the worst mistakes in this run. Why I, why I bring up the mistakes thing right now? So I'm gonna clip. Um, that crate and that roof a little bit, and I didn't catch it when it happened. Those are minor, and there's another minor one later, but I um, make a pretty... I get pretty unlucky with stuff. You'll see. I'll explain it. Yes, the enemies are shooting at each other. They prioritize shooting at each other over me, to a degree. It's complicated. There's two different alien races involved up there that I didn't notice. It might have actually been intentional, I don't remember. Oh, 
more fighting. It's important for the story, I guess. I've skipped <laughs> most of the story, of course, is the task. So I've cracked myself a spread rocket. And I will do another super cool skip with the MPFB that I just picked up. The MPFB is an important weapon because it deals the most knockback to me. And knockback is super important when your run speed is limited and other things. So here's here's the mistake. So I didn't have enough. I'm not quite high enough level. And there you go. I pick up enough nano to level up. And I needed that level to get a little bit of crack. So I could have taken a little bit less of a, a little bit of a detour earlier on and gotten more nano. But I didn't know that I was running low. So. So I've selected the MPFB again. Speaking of knockback, that's pretty cool. I knocked myself into the end trigger there. So I've selected the nuke. And this is the second boss fight in the game, and this will be just about as one-sided. And it's already over. A little bit of a dance for style there. He's very surprised that I picked up that nuke. I try to select the resonance detonator to skip kicking down that door, but I don't do it early enough, so whatever. And this here is why it's important to reference an actual speedrun by a human who knows the game better than I do, because it wouldn't have occurred to me to do that. And that's pretty cool. Grabbing that checkpoint is important, because if it's a checkpoint, I'm probably going to be killing myself. Because it's, it's, they're useful for that in speedruns. So here I actually have to take a little bit of damage there, and I've checked the damage so I don't fall down. That, I, the reason I have to is because I'm killing myself a little faster. You have to wait for that dialogue that long, by the way. You can't skip it earlier, anyway. This guy is not a threat. A lot of this is just walking around, nothing interesting is happening. Although something interesting is about to happen, so I do... Um, I'm gonna wait in this dialogue for a bit. And that's because I'm waiting for the Resonance Detonator to become equipped. And there's a way of optimizing that further, but I didn't know about it at the time. Basically being able to Resonance Detonator both of those doors instead of just one. On to Sector 8, or sorry, Sector 7. Fire a rocket just so he doesn't bug me. And this is the first instance of what's called a beast, Kamado Beast. They are frustrating, so instead of dealing with them, I just walk into them and tech the damage. The AI decides to be nice enough to let me go by. Onto the armory. So I actually created a save state here and made a mistake. I don't remember what the mistake was, but I do that later in the sector. So I undid time back to here to pick up more MPFB ammo. And I think I made a mistake at this point. So I know at some point I don't upgrade assimilate when I should have. Assimilate gives me more ammo. And reserve and I here's Vitalika, the truce creator from sector 3 so in a bit I won't have enough ammo and I don't realize that's a problem until sector 9 that was a pretty cool jump in my opinion so here's another beast the AI decides to be mean and jump up here so I just have to deal with it
This is pretty obvious. This is just me killing myself to get back to the checkpoint. This next room is kind of filled with quite a few enemies and they are frustrating. So I have to... I had to do this a few times. I jump on top of that overload in order to give myself a different upgrade because I hit it at a different time and the randomness hits differently. That's a nuke and I fired it on the earliest frame that's possible to destroy that Komodo weapon. There's a story in this game. It's decent. I'm skipping all of it, of course. And back onto the ground. <laughs> Destroy that ceiling lamp for some reason, okay. And then do another skip there with the nuke, blowing myself off across that ledge. And I don't pick up that MPFB ammo on the ground either. I pick up half of it, but it would have been more useful to have more. So this is the... Uh, Proxima boss fight. Proxima is a bit annoying, but it goes back very quickly. I'm going to stand as close to this electro pad as possible. If I go one frame further, I would get damaged by it. And then I just have to wait for the AI to do enough. It does enough orders, and I can upgrade, or I can activate that terminal on the first frame possible. And that terminal is already ended. The terminals reactivate the electro pads. And they do a lot more damage than my weapons can do. That's a little bit of an exploit there. And I did it again. I did it once and I'll do it again. If I fire those spread rockets at the right time, the explosion actually appears on the other side of Proxima for whatever reason. On the sector 8. 8 out of 10 done. Well, 7 out of 10 completed. Uh, I couldn't avoid that, so I just took the damage. A little bit slower, but whatever. Better than being knocked down. Come here. Duck under that. It doesn't look like I ducked. It looks like I just decided not to get hit. Um, so this is probably not optimal, but uh, whatever. This next room, well not this next room, but an upcoming room. There's something a little bit interesting that happens, besides just walking past enemies. Alright, so here's the room. So this is theoretically a... Um, the lift needs to be activated, so you have to wait for a timer to complete, and there's teleporters to so the enemies. So you just have to wait out the enemies. But you can skip it by killing the enemies, for whatever reason. And this is also something pretty cool. This is maybe the coolest strat in the run. I use the explosion to land on my feet, which is kind of the opposite of how an explosion should work, but it's pretty cool. And I couldn't avoid that, I guess. So I just checked it. Hey look, another chance to upgrade a simulate that I didn't notice. And <laughs> hi Dan. Your life was not worth 15 seconds. Uh spoilers for the game by the way. <laughs> Skip the cutscene. So the last two sectors of this game were the longest, although Sector 5 is pretty big as well. I fire that rocket off screen to get rid of the beast, the annoying enemy of the game. And you can't skip this overload, so I just revive once, whatever. I don't use it. Blowing up that wall stopped a Kamado assassin from appearing. Not that it really mattered, but whatever. 
So there's a, bu there's a bunch of terminals in this area that you have to press in order to open a pretty big door, a bulkhead. And a little bit later on in the sector, I will go through these in the most optimal route. Not the safest though. Whatever. And maybe that actually helped. There's another Annihilator, and I get lucky with how with what the Elite right there decided to do, so I can ba just barely press that terminal. I'm gonna go up here and grab a Shredder. So this is pretty much just a bunch of projectiles that I have to try to dodge. Or not dodge in that case, because it knocks me down right where I need to be. Get ammo when damaged is a lucky overload, because I will take damage and I need ammo. Although I'm not actually sure I actually got any ammo out of that, but whatever. Onto the Tazen Bunker. I will not... I'm a pacifist, but I will not... They don't let me in. So that that's actually not slower, that's two frames slower. That's actually not faster, I should say. But it does do damage. And her scream voice kind of distorts their voice line. So here I'm going to grab the CFIS and crack myself the Velocithor, which I will use in the next sector. And it also lets me get lets me do um, a pretty cool super move in this boss fight. So th this boss fight is broken up into two stages, two phases, whatever. Now uh, this is Iosa the... yeah, so Komodo Annihilator and Iosa. And she's annoying. So here's the super move. It's called Retribution. And it does a lot of damage. Not as much as I would have liked, but it's still fun. Probably should have actually. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe just there. This is this boss fight is pretty much done in a very similar way to the way you do it real time. Just jumping back and forth and trying to do damage. It actually doesn't matter how many of those laser sky things. I don't know. Uh, hit her. One does as much damage as all of them. For some reason. She's almost down to her last bit of health. So I try to use the optimal amount of MPFPs, which is all of them. The second stage of this fight is Iosa the Invincible, which, despite the name, is a much easier fight. Just in general. I will walk through her, she doesn't seem to care. And then delete her existence. And then shoot her. And because I'm playing in windowed mode, some of the screen effects and transitions don't actually appear. So there was a fade in that was supposed to happen that didn't. Actually, so there's two routes here. I can go up or down, and the faster way, if you have enough ammo, is to go bottom. But I needed to pick up that MPFB so I could do that. This this is a long sector, but I will skip a good chunk of it, so it goes by pretty quickly. So there's two things that are going to happen here pretty pretty quickly. I'm going to shoot at something off screen in one frame, and I will fall during that dialogue. So that's it. Those are the only interesting things that happen in this sector. Yeah, except for the boss fight at the end. 
That checkpoint is useless because well, it just is. And I don't really need to preserve ammo from this weapon, so I can use it wherever I want. And I'm already out of ammo. <laughs> I jumped there to manipulate Sky Smasher's AI for some reason. So if I don't jump, it targets me. I don't understand how it works either. And the final mistake of this run, I kind of screw up that jump. And I don't remember why. I think I was in a rush. These things are easy enough to avoid. Can't skip that breathing, but I can jump out of it. And because this isn't complicated, I actually switched over to real-time mode and just walked through here. Alright, so another NAM field reboot to optimize my upgrades for the final boss. And I, at this point, learned a new trick for upgrading things. A little bit late to learn that, but whatever. I can nudge myself one, uh, like one or two pixels at a time each time I upgrade. Get the resonance detonator there, the game, because I never cracked it, the game just gives it to me. It's nice, but I will need it. Skip the cutscene. That's not editing, that's actually skipping the cutscene. Frame perfectly, I think. Final boss. So the final boss is interesting, his name is Tor. And he's interesting because he's, he works on a timer, and there's nothing you can do to speed that timer up, so all you can do is try to do as much damage as possible. There was one thing, one move, yeah, so those weapons right there, the fractal rockets, actually slow down his timer. So it's just a random chance when he uses them. So it's really hard to optimize that. It's possible, but I didn't. All right, so that's the cycle. Get in five MPFBs and one rocket. And it doesn't really matter how much damage I take. One, two, three, four. And then immediately switch to the resonance reflector and reflect his charge balls back at him. Repeat. That jump there was pointless, I think. It was an accident, but I didn't correct it because it doesn't matter. So this task took me a while to do. I um, did it in about, most of it I did in about two weeks in December. And then I took a break right before this boss fight, actually. So I tasked this um, like three or four days ago as of recording this. So it's a lot fresher in my mind, but it's, there's nothing complicated here. This is pretty much just wait him out. There is a faster strat, and it's get fractal rockets every time and do six MPFBs um, per wave. But that's very frustrating, and I, it's hard to manipulate RNG in this game. So I didn't do it. If I do another test, I might give it a shot, but whatever. And that's slightly slower, but it doesn't really matter because the charge ball happens at the same time anyway. So I stand really close to him for this charge ball, trying to get within 441 right there, but he takes up the 442, and I couldn't optimize that even, uh, more. So that's the game. That's time, by the way. 2619. Pretty long cutscene here but that I can't skip. But then there's a very long cutscene here that I totally can skip and do. There we go. There's the game, 2619. Um, which beats world record in this category. 1.6 ton pacifist is the category, by the way. By um, 59 seconds. That's all. Thanks for watching, I guess.